Hi again. It's Tim, your LD expert from the Paris of the Prairies, beautiful Saskatoon. And it's at the end of August, so that means I'm not in Saskatoon. I'm at Cypress Hills Interprovincial Park for this year's Saskatchewan Summer Star Party, the annual get-together with the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada. As many of you have probably figured out by now, I love pointing my camera at the night sky. One of the things I get asked all the time is, what kind of a camera do I need to be able to do that? Well, I'm doing a presentation up here. I'm going to give you the two-minute version of it. Essentially, all the different types of consumer cameras and what they can and cannot do for you. So first, let's start with that cam camera that I know you've got in your pocket right now. Pull out your smartphone. That's right, the smartphone is probably the single most reason why people are taking more pictures than they ever have. And the smartphone, although it can do some wonderful things, is fairly limited in what it can do in the case of astrophotography, but it's not totally useless. The camera itself doesn't give you a lot of control over focus and exposure out of the box, but there are apps you can get, such as the Nightcap app that I put on my iPhone, that allows you to be able to adjust exposure, white balance, focus, ISO, even shutter speeds, giving you the ability to be able to do time exposures with it. Now, it's not going to give you the world's greatest shots, but it does give you the ability to do some atmospheric shots, or shots of brighter things like the northern lights, or if you've got a telescope and binoculars and you're looking at something bright, simply holding it up to the eyepiece, you can take photographs with that smartphone. The next of the line of cameras are the inexpensive point-and-shoot cameras. The ones that are running basically from that $100 to $200, $300 range. And although they're great for day-to-day -day shooting and are going to give you better pictures in many cases than you're going to see with the smartphone, in the case of astrophotography, you don't even have as much control as you'd have with a smartphone with an app. So just put that camera away and go back to your smartphone. Next, we move on to the bridge cameras. Basically, that camera, it's a point and shoot that kind of looks like a DSLR. You got that long telephoto lens on it and that sort of beefy look like a DSLR. And like a DSLR, you're seeing some added features. You're seeing features like manual focus and manual exposure, including aperture and shutter speed. You're also seeing things like, in some cases, an interval timer, making it very easy to do things like time lapses. As well, and this is very important, you're seeing raw capability. The ability to be able to record a lot more information and to be able to manipulate that information afterwards. So on the outset, they're looking a lot like a nice alternative to a DSLR, but honestly, they're still not going to give you as large a sensor and as good a performance. They're going to be good for brighter objects if you're shooting something like the moon or once again, aurora, anything that's very bright. But for general purpose use in astrophotography, still not your best option. So now this takes us next to the premium point and shoot cameras. They're those small little cameras that you're seeing in the top shelf that started at about $900 and go up from there. Well, what the premium cameras are for the person who wants to get very close to DSLR quality, but wants something they can throw in a pocket or purse and make it easier to carry around with. You've got a one inch sensor, not quite DSLR size, but a good size sensor. You're also getting automatic exposure, manual exposure, manual focus, raw capability, interval timers, or in the case of something like the Canon G7X, it even has the ability to go into star modes. And in star mode, you can shoot things like star trails, star fields, you can shoot even portraits in a, with a star field in the background, and time lapses. Now, it does have the ability to be able to do stuff like that, but with that smaller sensor and the 20 megapixel capability, it's still recording only the brightest of stars. So although you can see some amazing images from it, it's still not DSLR performance. Next step being the mirrorless cameras or the DSLRs. And in the case of those, we're now seeing a much larger image sensor. In the case of Panasonic or Olympus, we have a micro four thirds sensor. In the mirrorless cameras from Sony and from Fuji, we're getting the APS-C sensors. And in the DSLR manufacturers, we're dealing with APS-C sensors. So you're now getting a much larger image sensor, full manual exposure control, wider range of uh, exposure capability. You're seeing a camera really where you're at your first real step. It's not limiting you in the type of photography you can do with Astro and these cameras will give you that kind of performance with lens interchangeability, with a wide range of lenses to be able to do just about anything you want. Now we move on to the Cadillac of the cameras, that being the full-frame cameras. So we're talking about full-frame DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. 
So like the DSLRs in the crop sensor and the mirrorless in the APS-C sensors and micro four thirds, we're seeing that full exposure capability all of those wonderful things and now a larger image sensor allowing you to go to higher ISOs and still maintain sharpness. In the case of the A Sony In the case of the Sony A7SR2 no A7S2 In the case of the Sony with that full frame sensor and a 12 megapixel resolution it takes amazingly sharp photographs at very high ISOs. These two photographs here, one of the Northern Lights and one of the Milky Way, were taken with that camera at 12,800 ISO, no tripod. That's right, handheld. A half second exposure for the Northern Lights, a full one second exposure for the Milky Way. And in both cases, I was just hanging on to it and steady shot helped keep the, the image clear. So if that camera can do amazing shots like that at 12,800, imagine what it can do at 3,200 and putting it on a tripod. So it's two o'clock in the morning and my last night of viewing at the star party and it's an absolutely gorgeous night. And I don't wanna break the silence as everyone's enjoying this amazing sky above us. So here I am in the washer to talk about the last part. So it's Sunday morning, my last day at the star party. Last night was absolutely gorgeous. The Milky Way was magnificent. There was so much to see and so much to photograph. So let's talk about the Rolls Royce of the cameras. Medium format digital mirrorless cameras, specifically the Fuji GFX50. With that camera, we're now dealing with a sensor with 54 megapixel resolution. A camera that in raw mode when you trip the shutter, about 120 megabytes per file and amazing resolution. It has the ability to be able to shoot at very high ISOs and still give you beautifully noise-free imagery. Absolutely magnificent camera for astrophotography, even though it's aimed primarily at the shooter who's going to be doing fine art and probably landscape. So we've talked about all the different cameras from smartphones right up to medium format. As you can see, every one of them has their pluses and their minuses, their strengths and their weaknesses. Stop by your nearest London Drugs and talk to your LD expert so they can help you find the camera for your needs.